Good morning, and welcome to the TC Dojo from Single Sourcing Solutions. The TC Dojo is a TechCom community that is driven by you. Tell us what you want to learn. You choose the topics, and we find the experts. In the TC Dojo open session today, we have Pushpinder Tour from PTC here to talk about data reuse with keys. Pushpinder has been a part of the Arbortex product line for nearly 20 years. She was with Arbortex before it was acquired by PTC. She's been a solution manager, a consultant, a product manager, a project manager, senior technical trainer, and is now the director of product management for the Arbortex product suite at PTC. She's responsible for leading the vision and strategy for authoring, creating, and managing information using the Arbortex suite of products. She spent her career gathering critical customer requirements for releases and determining product roadmaps to fit strategic customer goals. We're especially grateful she could come to the TC Dojo today to share her experience with all of us. Now, Pushbender has a lot to cover, so she wants to save questions until the end, but be sure to type them in when you think of them so you don't forget what you wanted to ask. Pushbender, it's all yours. All right, thanks, Liz. Um, so Liz actually gave me a really good introduction already, but um, this is, I understand that with the dojo, it's a very um, small session where we're gonna focus this week on um, the data reuse with keys. So I have a very short agenda. Um, I'll talk a little bit about me. We'll talk about what data keys are. I'm not gonna go too much into depth in the, the um, standard definition of this, because I think what really makes sense for data keys is actually see them in action. So I'm gonna go through um, a use case example, and then I'm gonna give you an introduction to my demo where I'm gonna describe what I'm going to do, because sometimes when you're doing a demo, you're kind of flying back and forth between windows. So I wanna describe what I'm going to do, and then I'll physically show you within the product how that works. And then as Liz said, um, we'll save the questions for later just to make sure I get through everything. So um, as Liz already mentioned, I've been a part of the industry. I've been a part of ArborTech slash PTC for 20 years now, which is pretty amazing for me to say. Um, I've been through all sorts of different roles and today I'm actually in product management. So I'm responsible for the whole product portfolio for ArborTech. So that includes everything from editor, styler, um, APP, um, publishing engine, all of that, um, the whole gamut there. I am based out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. For those of you that have dealt with Arbortex for years, you know that that was the original um, starting home, founding home of Arbortex, and I am still based out of here. And um, Arbortex in general, just since we're talking about DITA, I did want to just kind of quickly mention that um, we were a founding member of DITA with IBM, and it goes way, way, way back. So out of those 20 years, you look back um, 14 of those years, and that's when Arbortex first supported DITA. So we started supporting it in 2004. So it's been a very long time coming, um, and it's something that we have some um, robust features for in the product, and that's part of what I'm going to show you today. So the, the first description of just what are DITA keys, right? So just from a very um, basic understanding. So your DITA keys is just a way within DITA where you can have indirect referencing. And all you're doing is you're using a quote unquote key name. And the point of that is that DITA wanted a way to allow the topic-based authoring um, to create links to other topics. And by switching the key on or off, you can change what that content is that's going to appear. And this is huge for reuse. So I won't go through all the advantages of reuse, but being able to use keys is also a big advantage of making sure that you're taking true advantage of the reuse story. What happens is that the key that you create um, is bound to the actual content that you want to publish via a key definition. And the way I'm going to show you in my demo is that all of the key definitions are actually residing inside of a map. And you could point to that map and then you can switch out maps based on which key you wanna use or you can do a key override. So really, as I mentioned, it's the reuse. So you're keeping the text identical, but you're referring to this kind of abstract key and you're telling it what to resolve to based on what the specific content is that you need to publish. So there's just a quick screenshot showing here's a whole bunch of keys. And this is what you'll see in the demo. And all of these key definitions are pointing to topics. It could point to images. It could point to tables. You can point to almost anything using a key. So that's kind of the, just the real basics of what DITA keys are meant to do and what their advantage is. 
So in the use case example that I'm going to show you, okay, so that's great. It's indirect referencing, it's reuse, it's making the key resolve to itself. So how does this work? So in the use case that we have is, let's say you have a product manual and it's for a lawnmower. And basically the lawnmower is exactly the same it has all of the identical content, except between model A to B, there's a difference in how the customer will be doing, um, will be following the procedure for changing their oil. There may be a difference in your recommended maintenance schedule for that lawnmower. And maybe the model itself has a little bit of a different look to it. So everything else is the same. So maybe it's 90, 95% of what you're going to tell the customer for the lawnmower is identical content, except for those three pieces. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna share all of the content that's identical. We're gonna create keys for those three specific pieces of content that's unique, and we'll create override um, for some of those keys based on that content. So that's what we're gonna do here. So if we take a quick look, the demo that I'm going to do, a quick introduction to the demo, is I'll have a map, and the map itself is going to actually point to a structure map. And that structure map is what's being reused. Okay, so that's that identical content. And you're saying, and this doesn't have to be two lawnmowers, right? It could be three, four, five. You could have 10 products that are almost exactly the same, except for very specific, unique parts. So what we've done here in this demo is we've created an entire map. That's the structure. That's a reshared structure. So we're, I'm going to show you two maps, same hierarchy. So it'll be one map for each manual for X1 as well as X2. The structure map will have all of the topic graphs in it. It'll have the actual depth of the structure of what you want inside of the manual. And then we're gonna have keys that are gonna swap out the information. So here's those three things that I was talking about um, earlier on the slide. So based on which model you're using as my customer, you might need to change the oil differently. You might have a different maintenance schedule and I'm also going to give you a different um, graphic because the product looks different. So I want to make sure that you get the right um, visual of the product as you're, as you're dealing um, inside of the manual. So that's just a quick look at um, how that demo is going to work. So when you look in the demo, um, I'll show you side by side. And again, I'll show you all of this, but I wanted to kind of visualize it first. You'll have, here you see I have the X1 user manual and I have the X2 user manual. It's two separate models. So within my editor window, I'm looking at what's called the column view. And inside of that, I have a map. And you'll see here that there's a lot of content that's, um, that can be unique based on the X1 versus the X2. So maybe the um, title is different. The book ID is a little bit different. The model number might be different, the serial number. So I can make all of that unique in their each individual map. But what I really wanted to point out, okay, so if you look at that, sorry, I meant to build that. But I really want you to look at is the bottom here where you'll see that there's a structure and you notice how it's the same structure in both maps, right? So I only had to create the structure once and I could reuse it multiple times, right? That's the whole value. You. So my X1 has this user manual structure and so does my X2. What's going to happen though is I'm going to override some of the keys. So what's going to happen is that um, the changing the oil, there's actually a key called change the oil and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the navigation title so it points to the exact manual that I'm working on and I'm going to change where that key is pointing to, what it needs to resolve to. So it'll be different in each of the manuals. I have another key for the maintenance schedule. The name of the key is maintenance schedule. I'm going to change the navigation title. And again, I could change the href. I'm also going to change out the image. So the image, the key is called product image. And in this case, in my second manual, I want it to point to X2 versus X1. So I'm just changing what it needs to resolve to. So let me, oops, not questions yet. Let me go ahead and show you in the product um, some of the demo part of this. So if we take a look here, here is, um, oops, sorry, I've got too many windows going on here. Let me show you first of all the structure. Remember I said both of them pointed to the same exact structure. So this structure did a map 
has all of these different parts. It has all of these topic references. They're exactly the same. I don't care which lawnmower. You're going to do the same thing when you're keeping the shields in place, the same thing with refueling, uh, the same thing with the blades and the controls. All of that is similar. Okay, so this entire structure has already been built. What's really cool about this, and this comes back to all of the DITA standard and how you have maps within maps and how you're changing out um, references, is there's actually a reference to a map called X1 Keys, all right? So I'm gonna open up this map, and this map has all of the keys and part of that screenshot that you were looking at. So here's that key called Product Image, and you'll see here that it points to a um, reference to an X1 JPEG and the key is called product image. And then if I um, look through here, let's find the um, maintenance schedule. And you can see here, because it's the X1, it just says maintenance schedule. So this is an entire map of keys that is being referenced inside of the structure. Okay, so you've already got kind of two levels here. Now, if I were to go into the structure for the X1 as well as the X2, so let me put those side by side. So here's the X2 user manual. And let me make sure I open up my X1. So here's my X2. And my X2 has that same thing. It has that Acme lawnmower user structure. Remember the one we just looked at? Inside of that was a key map, which I'm still gonna leave everything the same. I have a map with a key definition map inside of it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna override three of those keys because changing the oil is different. Again, the maintenance is different. The product image is different. So if you look at product image, I'm gonna change it so it's pointing to X2. If you look at the maintenance schedule, it's gonna be a different maintenance schedule and so is changing the oil. So if you give me one moment here, I will show you the um, exact folders that contain this content. And inside of here, so if you look here, there's my X2 folder. And inside of that, it has its own change the oil, its own maintenance schedule, and that X2 file. So there's that green, this one has a green lawnmower. Changing the oil is a little bit different. And I'll put these side by side so you can see these differences here. And then the maintenance schedule. Okay. Here we go. So if I go in here, I can see my changing the oil. Let's open that topic reference. So this was changing it on X1, and this is changing it on X2. And you could see already the navigation title was different. So there's a difference there. Um, there's also a difference in um, tilting the lawnmower to the right on this one. And this one says tilting the lawnmower to the left, okay? So what I've done is that the actual entire procedure is being swapped out based on which particular lawnmower model that this is working on. If I look at, so let me close those out. And if I look at the structure again, there is, um, if I go up here, there's about your lawnmower. And, oops, let's open that up again. So in here, in the About Your Lawnmower for X1, it has the green, or excuse me, the red one. And you know for X2, it was supposed to be green. So if I go to X2, and there's my um, override definition for this product and it has the X2 in there. So when I actually do a publish on these, it'll be a lot more clearer that these are being swapped out. But just to go back to, um, to kind of describe this again, I've got X1, let me move that to the left so it matches the screenshot that you saw earlier. I've got X1, I've got X2, they both have 
um, differences when it comes to their metadata. So I was able to make changes on all of the metadata. The book part number is different, the model number, the serial number, which is fine because they're two separate maps. These maps are pointing to a structure map. The structure map is pointing to a key map. And then I overrode just those three keys inside of my um, X2 structure. So if I go in here and I'm gonna do a quick publish on both of these. And if I do the publish, I have this already existing. I can go ahead and open it up in just a moment. So that was my X1. So there's my X1 lawnmower. Okay, so there's the PDF for that. And as soon as I create the PDF here for this one, we'll compare those three things that I had described before that the keys were swapping out and changing. And give it a moment just to resolve all of those key refs and know that what it's supposed to pull in. But as we're looking at this, this is the X1. So this particular model, it's supposed to be look like this red lawnmower. And if I go towards the end here, um, the um, maintenance schedule is a little bit different. Specifications, all of that content is in here. So here's that maintenance schedule on the X1. And here's the one for the X2 model, the X2 lawnmower. So if I go in here, <clears throat> there's the green that's been swapped out. And then if I do a quick um, schedule, you can see here that it's actually different where this one says, oh, for the first 20 and the 50 hours, you're supposed to change the oil on the X2. Don't worry about it. You should only do it in the first 20 hours. Um, and then the second part of the table is different too. So all of those things are different. They just put everything else in here. If I go to operating the controls here, everything else is the same. It's exactly reused where I'm not having to recreate anything. So I can change the look and feel just by swapping out the image. And you'll notice here on the cover page as well, you've got at the bottom the different um, part number, or excuse me, the model numbers that I was talking about. You can um, re replace those because they were separate maps. And then again, if you look at the first about your mower, everything's the same except for the graphic got swapped out here, and then the um, oil maintenance schedule and everything else. So. Again, I'm not having to go back and fat finger things in. I don't have to ask somebody to rewrite something for me. I don't have to get it approved. I can deal with all the corporate guidelines. Everything is done. And if I wanted to, I could technically go ahead and create an, an X3 model by just pro probably saving the data map if I wanted to do that, swap out the keys again, and make those differences. So that's really how all of this is working together, changing those keys, First of all, defining the keys, which is done here, defining what the keys are, what you want to call them, what they're pointing to, <clears throat> sharing the structure, sharing the key map, and then swapping out which keys you needed to make unique for your, for your content and still be able to re reuse across the board. Okay, so Liz, that is what I had that I wanted to quickly show and demonstrate. Um, I'm happy to kind of take questions here. Excellent. That was great. I also noticed that, uh, like it should, of course, it it changes the cross references to the new titles yes. and it does all of that. Did it yes, that, way. that is a good point too. Yep. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Let's see. It was there right there in that one? Maintenance schedule. Maintenance schedule X one, X two on the other side. Yeah. Yep. Now it's time to type in those questions if you haven't already. And while you do, here's a look at what's coming up. The TC Dojo Mastermind Group is a month of monthly driven member discussion group where the attendees present their specific challenges on topics on their mind in a confidential, supportive environment. 
Mastermind groups have been cited in Forbes as being extremely valuable to the attendees. We have three going on right now. One is Everything Techcom, DITA, TBA, topic-based authoring, to the specifics of cross-references or Grafrex. Um, the other is Product Focus on Arbor Text and Windchill. It's a collaborative peer-to-peer -peer environment where everyone can lend their expertise to each other. It's been a really amazing to participate in and a lot of fun too. Uh, the master mastermind sessions are not free as a way to guarantee the dedication and commitment to all the parties involved. You can sign up at the TC Dojo website. In our next TC Dojo, we have Kelly Schrank talking about productivity. She's gonna show you how to use an old school method to address modern content task mastery. It's gonna be a great session, so be sure to sign up. How do you do that? Well, go to www.tcdojo.org. That's a short link that will take you to this page. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see everything that's coming up. We've got some questions. Pushfinder, here's the first one. Can you, sh uh, can you show more about what keys look like in XML source? That's a good question. We'll come back to that, Rick, so that I can let her sort of rearrange that. Um, Arbitex just sort of hides the, the angle brackets, but it is basically source. So hang on one second. Here's a here's one for you, um, Pushpinder. Okay. How low of a level would you define keys? Word, sentence, paragraph, et cetera. That's a good one. Yeah, I think that's going to have to be, uh, you can do it at any level. I'm not sure that I would ask people to do it on a kind of sentence or a phrase level. Um, I think doing it on images and doing it on chunks of data, um, like these topic refs that I showed you, is probably easier to keep track of and makes more sense. Um, the more granular you get, the more of a kind of spaghetti noodle it becomes um, if you start swapping out specific um, small kind of words or, or text, um, but you can, I mean, if that's how you need to build your content and that's what switches out, like product names, product images, those are the things that I think I've seen the most that people do at that small um, of a level or even web URL sometimes because a URL might be different um, for, for um, a specific manual based on the product or based on who your audience is, especially for translation purposes. Absolutely. Um, let's see what I do think too. I've heard that um, translation doesn't like it below the sentence level unless it's something like a proper noun, like the product name or the URL yeah. or something like that. Yep, exactly. Yeah. All right, here's another one. Good one. If you have an inline link from one topic to a topic that is referenced by a key ref, do you have to use the key in the link? <laughs> Uh, I have to think about that one. <laughs> and then I've got the, the comment here that says, yes, I know about avoiding inline links. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm like sitting here going, I got to visualize that one. So you have an inline, repeat that again. So it's like the, uh, the cross-reference I think that you had in the demo. If you have an inline oh. link from one topic to a topic referenced by a key ref, because that's really what you're doing, right? You are, you are cross-referencing the maintenance instructions, which is defined in a key. Right, right. Do you have to use the key in the link? And that seems like a yes. Do you wanna bring that back up? I'll hit the stop share and we'll switch back to you. Oh, yeah, hang on. I also wanted to show the file, the, the keys the file. map. Yeah, yeah, just the keys map as well. So I can All do right. So. so I'll stop your sharing. Do you wanna continue? Yes. Oh, here, I just hit the stop share. Now you can start again. There we go. Uh, should be sharing, yeah. Um, I just brought this up in Notepad just really quickly um, to see what the, I think this is what you're asking for, right? How the, the keys, um, you know, here's the, the key definition. You know, there's the about. You can change the nav. I mean, it's, it's just XML. So, I mean, it's the same as any XML right. file with the angle brackets and so forth. Yeah. Um, and then at the top, you'll see that, you know, it still has your doc type declaration. It's based off of the DITA key base, uh, DTD. And uh, what version of Arbitext are you showing here today? I am showing version 7.1. I believe I should be on M20 or M30, or sorry, M, uh, M21 is our latest. And we actually have M40 that'll be releasing in a couple of weeks here at the end of this month. Excellent. Those Can you uh, switch to that? Um, 
the about us in the X2. Hang on. I have way too many windows here. That is how it gets. With <laughs> Sorry, so you we want, want the, the about because that's in both places, right? And, and the about is in the basic structure because it's not overridden, right? About your mower this. Yeah. So you can see here. The only thing overridden is the image. And that's because of the key. Well, the maintenance schedule is replaced. Right. right, that's being replaced and that's being overwritten too. Yeah, yep. so if I open so, yeah, that, you can see that, that and then it says that. which one are you? Yep, and it's saying you have a key reference as well as an href. Which one do you want to open at this point? So, all right, so let us know if that answers the question. Um, all right, good. So, let's see, here we have another one. How are keys different from profiling? It's mm, a good one. So, um, so profiling in Arbor Text is a way of um, basically uh, you're not swapping out information always. It's almost like you're you're taking you're removing and including information, if that makes sense. So when you profile something and you say this is a piece of text that only applies if you're using the you're 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 creating one large file with everything in it. At the up front, and then you're labeling pieces and saying this only applies to X1, this only applies to X2. And then you're asking the profile to say, show me what this would look like only if I was doing X1 versus X2. So in that one, you're starting with everything up front, and then you're labeling what you want taken in and out. You're not necessarily swapping um, the same text or the same, like I said, the product image in that case. Um, so it's a, it is a little bit different and it's not really indirect referencing that you're doing. It's more of the content that's still held there. Does that make sense? I, that's a great way to describe it actually. Um, so if you'll let us know if that answers the question and we'll follow up from there. All right, we have one similar question and I know that um, Arbitex sort of protects writers when they're doing their key refs also. So here's the question. How do keys differ from con refs? So con refs are another data standard. Um, and con refs can get tricky too. So con refs is where you're, you're literally swapping. Um, <laughs> I've really seen con refs used more for things like list sometimes where you have the same list but you might want to con ref steps two three and four to be different in one versus the other um, i think it really winds up just the way you do keys much easily allows you to remove all of those dependencies and keep them separate whereas con refs people will do con ref files they will do con ref images um, and they'll try to swap things like images in and out um, what gets tricky with CONREFs a lot of times is the management of those as well. Um, I don't know, Liz, if you have more experience with that, but like when I've, I actually, we, from an Arbortex perspective, we actually have customers use XInclude more than CONREFs when they're trying to pull in information. So when they're trying to um, cross-reference a topic or they're trying to cross-reference um, paragraphs, we actually tell them to X-include because X-includes are a bit more cleaner and easier to track as well in a content management system than CONREFs are because you're getting in line into the content um, and you, you're not really storing things as a separate file object at that point. So, um we do we 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 go either way right but mostly we try to keep people to keys because mm -hmm. they are safer right conref can drop out you're right conref can drop out the next include can to if, if the file can't be found right so but i like how um when you insert a key in arbor text it also puts the conref as sort of a fallback so that in case the key doesn't resolve, at least you get the basic, you have the other way to, of fetching it. Um, so one of the people asked uh, how, what content management system you're using. And I know that for the demo we're purposes, we're just using the file system, but do you wanna mention? 
Yeah, so Arbortex, yeah, so Arbortex Auditor um, does have a integration with um, Windchill, with PTC's Windchill system. So Windchill Service Information Manager, or SIM. So you'll see here there's um, um, an object, um, and I'm not sure I have this version, so oh, I do. Um, but anyway, what you would do is you would just use that and connect, and what, what I would be connecting to is Windchill. That's the one integration that we have um, supported out of the box. I'm not in this demo, that is true. I decided to keep it clean and just be able to do it on my um, local machine. All right. Well, we have a very clearly explained, thank you, comment oh, from good. the audience. Thanks. That's great. And uh, thank you. Okay, I see how they work. Excellent. All right, I don't see any more questions. Thanks for coming to the Single Sourcing Solutions TC Dojo, where it's all about you, what you want to learn. Always attend a webinar live. You can't ask questions of a video. So subscribe to our TC Dojo mailing list at join.tcdojo.org. Every month we go out and find experts willing to share their expertise based on your votes in the TC Dojo survey. Why should we tell you what to learn? You should tell us. So be sure to vote at survey.tcdojo.org. The TC Dojo is our pleasure to host. As always, if you need more personal help, we're here to take you from the basics to mastery. See you next time.